Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee meeting. Today is November the 18th, 2024. Not only do we have a quorum, we have a full quorum. I'm glad to see that. I want to thank you, everybody, for showing up. I call this meeting to order. Our first uh, order of business is I need a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Motion to approve. Second. second. I got a motion from Ms. Davison and a second from Mr. Oliver. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any <laughs> oppose? All right, we'll get started and jump right into this. Veterans Day celebration. Is that Kathy or? It is. It is. <clears throat> All right, so that was uh, last Monday, November 11th. Here at City Hall, had a good turnout. Uh, veterans the fairs had a table up at the front with uh, resources for veterans, which was nice. Um, National Anthem Girl was great and um, went very smoothly. Jules introduced everybody. And Steve led us in prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. So. I have to say that young lady that sang the National Anthem, man, she was right on point. She was. She's a, she is. Uh, she's a good one. She's really good. And that table that was set up out there, and I meant to tell you this, uh, both all of you off uh, script, was uh, that's uh, Ephelus is his name. I think it is. Ephelus. Ephraim. Is it Ephraim? The gentleman that was here with the table? Yeah, Ephraim. Ephraim. I asked him if he knew who Ephraim Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. was, and he said no. And if you're not an old person, you wouldn't know who that is. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he had some really good information, some good information. Has anybody got any comments about the Veterans Day? I thought it turned out real well. I'm a little disappointed that uh, we didn't schedule it for Out by the Wall. It was such a pretty day. It wouldn't have been if we had scheduled it for the <laughs> I had to give David a hard time about it. It's raining that morning when we headed this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and the big one that's coming up, Miss Kathy, the Parade right. of Lights with the Winter Festival and all of that good stuff. All right, um, that is scheduled for December 7th. We will have the Winter Festival that day from 3 to 8 at the park, it will include, uh, we'll have pictures with Santa and Mrs. Claus between 6.30 and 8. They will be in the parade, so they won't be there until later for pictures. Uh, got the tree lighting ceremony, vendors, hot cocoa, treats, music, and the snow rink. Right now we've got 18 uh, craft vendors registered, or vendors. Uh, the parade theme is I'll be home for Christmas. It starts at City Hall at five o'clock. Our Grand Marshals this year are Laverne Officers Ashley Bullyjack and Gregory Kern. And, of course, uh, that funnels into the park, into the Winter Festival. And right now, we've got 24 registrations for that. Did you say the lights at the park? I mean, well, it's the tree lighting ceremony? It is at the park, so that, that'll be immediately after the parade. Okay. Right. So about maybe 6 o'clock-ish, somewhere in there. And Laverne High School uh, Choir will come perform some songs at the end of the parade after the tree lighting as well. Andrew, can I request, because of the choir is singing, can I, can I request two microphones and two speakers? Okay. Is that possible to do up there? Yes, sir. Uh, they do a great job, and I'd like to really get them to come over the sound waves. And what time is the lineup, Kathy, for the parade? Uh, well, lineup generally starts around 3 o'clock. We try to get everybody in place. And I don't have the agenda right here, but we usually do. If the parade starts at 5, then we usually do the um, trophies, the parade winners around 4 o'clock. So they have to be in place to be able to be judged. So the lineup be there at three. Correct, and then the judging is at four, and the parade starts at five. All right. 
Anybody have any questions? And then we'll move on to everybody's favorite, the snow rink. All right, snow rink uh, opening day will be December 6th. And it'll be open from 4 to 8 that night. And then we do have a schedule online. And we've got the events posted on Facebook because Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, depending on the week, the times are a little different. So it's not where I can announce Fridays from 4 to 8. It might be a little different this year. So they can check either Facebook or Laverne's website, and they'll be able to see the exact times. And it's still walk up and sign up if it there's is. space available. Correct, yes. And they'll be able to sign the waiver and get the skates at that time. Um, and our special needs gate will be December 22nd from 3 to 4 p.m. Are there any spots for volunteers this year? I'm sorry? Spots for volunteers. Spots for volunteers? We, c we can take volunteers, yes. You know, we, first year we had hot cocoa and we're passing out skates. Right. Um, was that at the Winter Festival? No, that's what it's about. That was the inauguration year? Yeah, they've not. We haven't done that again since that first year. Usually, they they don't even last an hour on the skating rink. Usually, they last about thirty to forty minutes. Okay. Yeah, so they just rotate in and out. That now. Okay. I thought Giles was going to tell us he would be there <laughs> teaching kids how to skate. How to fall. <laughs> That's about all I can do. The only. Suggestion for anybody that might be watching, or if you guys want to remind it, and I, I seen some people bring their own skates last year. I don't recommend that. Those skates are not made for that ice. They're your home blades that you bring from the house are real sharp, and that ice is just not. It's not enough for that. I think if you you don't need to bring them, you need to rent them. Come and rent them. The skates. I believe are a little wider than. It's it's not ice. It's got a, some kind of yeah. like acrylic. acrylic. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like acrylic, and there's no charge on the skates. Yeah. 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 There's no charge for any of this, and it's going to be closed on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What was that schedule? I tried to look at it, and remembered it. Um, it is closed on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and the only reason we are really doing that. For the past two or three years that we've had it, we haven't really gotten a whole lot of um, use during those days and those hours. So we've kind of combined it into a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. All right. Any questions about the snow rink? Nope. I've been driving by in the mornings. I take my granddaughter to school, and I've seen y'all out there setting it up. and. I've, every morning, I'm like, look, there they are. There they are. It's, it's she set, loves it. It's set up and ready to go. I got one more grandkid that's going to be old enough to come to it this year. Will, uh, will Mr. Oliver be out there skating this year? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> All right. He'll hold you to it. Let us know when that is because we need some TikTok videos. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise when I get out there skating and he'll be like, okay. Well, just be rest assured there's <laughs> always a staff good. member there, so we will make sure to get that. <laughs> so what about on the, let me see if I'm saying this right, on the nights that it's open, or some of the nights, will will there be anybody out there set up like doing any hot chocolate or is there a vendor uh, set we, up we to sell it? We tried that one year, but they didn't have enough foot traffic to make it worth their while. Okay. So that, yeah, we tried to do it that one season and after the <clears> first <throat> two nights, they never came back. So bring your thermos, Kevin. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to Martin Luther King celebration. All right, it is January 20th next year. It'll be here in the boardroom at City Hall at 10 a.m. Our speakers will be Commissioner Hope Oliver and Pastor Joe Randall. Be who's who? <laughs> who's who's Commissioner, Commissioner Hope Oliver? That's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, did I say it wrong? Uh, no, just double checking. <laughs> yeah. And Joe she is the. Tell you, did she? No, I didn't know <laughs> Joe is the. Uh, Joe's the one that comes down to the senior center on Mondays and does Bible study. Correct. Super nice. Correct. Those are two good ones. Two good ones. Yes, it is. Uh, 
Martin Luther King celebration, January 20th. What time does that start? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. All right. Any questions about it? All right, now this next one. Uh, I do, Steve. Okay. I, go on. I think last year or years before, the seniors were <coughs> came here for Martin Luther King Day. Yes, some of them always come. And yeah. I just wondered if it would be opened again this year for this time for them to come. Oh, anybody can come, but some of the seniors usually always come and sit right over oh, there. Really? And uh, but yeah, anybody, it's open to the public. Right. It's what yeah, everybody's yeah. welcome. Yeah, everybody's welcome. But they usually come as a group. Mm -hmm. Melissa and Linda would bring. Them. Yeah. Absolutely. Are they going to have anybody singing? At the uh, I don't so think at Martin Luther. Actually, we can we announce that? That's now? why I didn't put it on there. I wasn't sure. We do kind of have somebody that is committed that's uh, pretty well known in the Christian music industry that has a new song out. That uh, I don't know if we're at liberty now to throw the name out there, but it's a pioneer in Christian radio. Um, plans to do a new song here. So, if you come, that cannot be recorded on your personal phone. That is one stipulation. So, that is, that's in the works. Um, once that is 100% solidified, then we will definitely get that out. But it's uh, we're kind of excited about that. Um, I'm not sure this room is going to be big enough to hold that, but we're going to fill it up. And nice. Details, uh, you'd hope to sing. <laughs> get her to speak. Get her to sing. No, she can actually sing. Get her to sing. May have a duet going on. It all falls through. She'll do it. Mm -hmm. I can sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's, it's on me. But. Yeah. <laughs> You're brave. <laughs> You're brave. Yeah, I'm going to sing. I'm going to write that down. So you I'm going to text her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, this next one's going to be a little. Uh, Need you all to really listen and get involved and ask plenty of questions. David? I think Andrew and I are probably going to try to tag team this one. Um, as you guys are aware, Universal Sports League has had the contract for the ball league the last two years. Um, we're still currently in negotiations with them trying to hammer out a contract. We do not have anything solidified now to go before the board for the December meeting, so the earliest we can look at is the January meeting. Um, there's some things that they're requesting that we're not 100% sure we could fulfill on our side. There's some things that we are requesting that we're not 100% sure they're willing to do on their side. Um, as we stated before, we are trying to find that happy medium to bring a soccer youth soccer league to Laverne. And using those front four set of fields is imperative to make that work. So originally, we were going to back those front four fields out of that because our plan was to move forward with the youth soccer league. So late in the game right now, even if we had somebody come in, we don't think they'd be able to operate a spring league anyway. So we are up to releasing those front four fields for tournament use for the league, which is kind of what they have requested. With, uh, and we haven't proposed anything back to them yet because we just got their um, revisions Friday afternoon. So we are, um, we're gonna, that's gonna be our proposal to give the, them the use of those front four fields back with the understanding if some chance we do get a soccer league to come in and they wanna try to operate before the fall season, we have to have some kind of happy medium where we can all schedule and use the same facility, especially those front four fields. They're still going to have 12 months worth of use on the backfields at this time if, if that's what they choose to do. Now, there's some stuff in this contract that our department is only about 10% of this. Do we have to say so or we have any leeway where we can make adjustments? 90% of the contract is, is legal. 90% is 100% legal. Um, there's things that we can't change even if we wanted to change. And the proposals that have been made now are on um, the recommendation of, of the city's attorney staff. So any, anything that was put in here 
it's pretty much come straight from our attorney in our legal department. So what they're trying to do over the course of the last several years is make each contract um, kind of mirror the other contract. So football is mirrors baseball. And if, if uh, inline hockey were to come back, their contract would mirror the same. So there is some differences there as far as user fees and the amount of money that would be owed to the city, but the language in the rest of the contract, we're trying to keep uniform. Um, can we work things out? I hope we can work it out. Um, you know, all we can do is, is uh, make the changes on our end that we feel like we can make and we're comfortable making. Um, I don't know if some of those are going to be deal breakers on their end or not. We, we haven't gotten that far yet. But there, we're nowhere near getting a contract in front of the board, and that wouldn't, that wouldn't be until our January meeting. If you guys got any questions, please shoot them at us because, um, I mean, we definitely want to see both thrive in Laverne. And our thinking was if we're going to pursue youth soccer, we need a dedicated space for them. So that's why we pulled the front four fields out because we were how do you how do you pursue something when you don't have the facilities readily available for them to use? Now here we are two months later and we haven't had an in person meeting with with the um, an organization. We've just talked to them a couple of times. So we can't justify holding on to the front four fields if they're not going to be in use. So at least it would free them up for tournament play. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that now. We have, like I said, we have not had any um, back and forth with the ball league other than this. Um, we sent out what we thought we could do um, 10 or 11 days ago and got our response from them on Friday afternoon. And we just haven't had time to go through it and, and – uh, give them our responses to those questions. Anybody got questions before I start? Go ahead so, and start. <laughs> you just get the RFP out for soccer. I just give up. <laughs> Good to see you, Felicia. There are, there are a couple of organizations out there that are turnkey and are looking to expand, they're growing also, and they just don't know if they were to bite this off how they would staff it. Our, our facilities and our setup would be perfect from them because they're basically playing in a field with a portage on right now, and they're turning kids away. So if they can take where they're at now and move their whole operation to Veterans Park and open that up for Laverne kids to sign up, then it's a win-win for everybody. Their organization now is less than two miles from our park. So it's a no-brainer to just combine everything. Yeah. It's just getting all the wheels in motion and everybody on the same page. But then again, it would have to go out for an RFP, and there may be two or three other organizations out there that want to put in for it. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about was make sure you all understand that, as David said, this is 90% legal. It's not David and Andrew. It's not us. It's 90% legal. And we can have the best scenario in the world, but if legal says no, then it's a no, period. But also David uh, has talked to somebody about the soccer. We haven't talked about soccer in a while because it's just not really been worth talking about. We haven't had a thing, but uh, I know that him and Andrew are trying to accommodate and please the legal department, and, and they're in the middle of this, so uh, they've got to do that. I guess one of my questions, uh, David, you made this statement about, because we all want to see baseball survive. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's been a, for years, it's been an uphill battle. But at the same time, our uh, 
I don't think demographics is the right word. I think that's more with do with monies and jobs. But anyway, our uh, participation and and citizens have changed. Back when back when my son played well, when Kevin's oh. sons played ball here, we had twelve hundred kids. But now, since then, Laverne is probably in the neighborhood of about 35 to 40 percent diverse. And out of that 35 to 40 percent is about 70 percent Hispanic. And I, I think that's a pretty fair statement. And a lot of those kids, they want to play soccer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not. Some of them are okay. Some of them's into baseball, football, basketball, and that's great. I love it, but let's call it what it is. So it's it's making it tough on on. Uh, 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 I talked to some people in Smyrna, and most of their players come from Laverne in in soccer, and most of their players in baseball come from Laverne because Laverne got a bad name, bad rap, whatever, for the last few years, and and they're happy there. And they're not coming back. Not to say Laverne's not doing a great job. It's just that they are not coming back. So we got to we got to look out for for those kids as well as other children. But my question to David is: Here it is, November the twentieth, eighteenth, and what what seems to be the getting back and forth communication gap from the baseball league to you all and getting it back and forth. You said you'd reached out, but you've not heard and stuff. What, what, I mean, it's going to be, um, it's going to be January before, because you got to get it past us, then you got to get it past the, the BOMA. Well, without going into too much detail, the contract, they've had two contracts with the city so far. The language in the contracts really haven't changed other than one or two items that the attorney was like, if you're doing this with football, then we need to do it with baseball also because we cannot differentiate between what we do with one organization and one the other. Um, of course, there's other stuff that is tied. You know, if, if they haven't had a fall league in the past, their contractual obligation it states one figure and then, so the past two years, we have brought that back before the uh, this board and the board of mayor and aldermen to adjust that figure to uh, accommodate for them not having a fall league. I'm not 100% sure any of us are comfortable with adding that clause in there on the front end. Hey, this is your fee for two seasons, but on the front end, if you don't do a back season, we're just going to automatically cut your fee in half. What incentive does that, what incentive is there to move forward with two seasons? Right. If you know, if I don't do it, no big deal. My fee's cut in half. That, I don't, as a, as a department, and we, we just don't want to approach it like that. That may be a deal breaker for them, but it's always on the table. It, if the effort is there, but you just don't have the participation for the public, we don't have a problem bringing that back before this board to have a reduction <clears throat> in fee. We don't have a problem taking that before BOMA and asking for a reduction in fee. I'm just not 100% sure it's good business to build that into the front end of a contract because it, it's like it's an, an escape clause almost where, yeah, you know, I ain't got to do it. I, what, I'm not, uh, and, and I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying, you know, I hope that's not a stickler because there are ways, there are other ways around that, you know. There, there's more than one way to skin that cat, and it's like we've done the last two years. And just to be clear, if, uh, if you or attorneys or whoever decide to let them have those front four fields to have their tournaments and make their own money, if soccer is not involved, we're still going to leave their fees cut in half. Is that correct? Well, 
There, there are fees now, and we have rethought, we have rethought this as uh, Andrew and I have talked about this as the day's gone on. Um, after I, you know, had spoke with you this morning, I, I think to be fair across the board and to be fair to the citizens and our department and the city, if we were to release those four fields for six additional months, I think it would only be. I think it would only be plausible to add an additional fee on top of that because it, we're still incurring the expense. And if they have tournaments on the front field, then that's more manpower we have to cover. It's more product we're putting on the field. And I understand they can't operate at a loss, but the tournaments are where the majority of your income comes in. But you can't expect the city to pick up an extra four fields and take a loss either. So there is some stuff there that still needs to be worked out. I think it's doable. Um, I don't think, you know, as far as those changes were made, we could make those changes tomorrow and get them back to her. That'd be yay or nay for them to say. I don't think, I don't think we would send it back to the attorneys until we hammered out everything on both sides. Yeah, because that's waste. not the only issue that we have. We are, we're pretty far apart on several on several items that have not been issues under the previous two contracts. So when they first started and they had their RFP, what I mean, what are the big major changes that's making it so difficult? Um, I did not. Did you bring the RFP with you, Andrew? No. I did not bring the RFP with me. Um, as far as their contract, that was initially they, they received eight fields at Veterans and their user fee was for $8,000. That listed 12 regular season games for rec ball, spring and fall, with an end-of-season tournament. And then that also included um, up to seven tournaments that um, they could have there at Veterans Park. The agreement that was sent back to them was, and we had met with USL in person when we told them this, this would be four backfields, so that'd be five, six, seven, and eight, the back quad. They would still have seven tournaments and it'd still be 12 games, their fee would be cut in half from 8,000 to 4,000. And basically, um, pretty much everything's exactly the same in the contract except for the fact of using eight fields for tournaments. Like David said, we are, we could go back before them and have no issue of releasing the front fields for a specified amount of time. Like I said, that does incur you know, your overtime costs for your staff, electricity, janitorial supplies, field supplies, paint, chalk. I mean, even increasing their user fee from the 4000 to whatever is decided, at the end of the day, that still doesn't cover the cost of the city's um, expense, which all in all, the city's not out to make a uh, profit by any means. We're here to provide service for the kids of our community. And don't... And we're not trying to air dirty laundry, but you guys being the Parks Advisory Board, we feel like it's prudent that you hear the information from us because there's always two sides to every story. But we don't want you to get outside of this room and somebody asks you something and you're on the advisory board. How, do, how would you feel if you were on this board and this was part of your decision and you didn't even have any information or know what was, was going on? Now, I think one thing that has changed in their current contract that may not have been in the others, but it has always been in football's contract. So keep in mind, attorneys trying to make football's contract and, and baseball's look the same because what you do for one, you need to do for the other. Football has always maintained their concession equipment. The city does not maintain their concession equipment. If their fryers go down, if their griddle goes down, that's on the organization to replace that. Um, they're using that facility to make money for their nonprofit. It would be like me loaning one of you guys a, a used car and you driving it for two years and the motor blow up and you expect me to put a new motor in it. I haven't been using it, you know, to, to my benefit. Granted, they do give a fee to the city, which covers our basic, by, but like Andrew said, by no means are we making money. So I think that may be one of the things that is included because... <laughs> I don't see how the city can maintain all of the equipment in that concession stand. But it's always been like that, right? 
Well, it hasn't been in their contract till this year, but in their RFP, they said that they would maintain the con concession stand equipment. So it did say that in the RFP? Yes. That they submitted. Okay, so not to harp around on this, do you all have, is there any way to know any kind of ETA you're dealing with here? Um, our plan is to sit down tomorrow and get our responses to them hopefully by the end of the day and then um, we'll see where it goes from there I, I don't see this getting it's I mean the deadline for the agenda was today I don't see it I know they're going to come back and we're after they're, they're going to come back and we're still going to have some things that we need to work out if it's salvageable even at that point, if we came to an agreement, it would have to go before the attorneys for approval. And then the attorneys are busy also, so that's that's they another, huh? Well, th I know there are certain things in here that the attorney is not going to remove. Okay. Whether that's a deal breaker on their end, that would be up to their organization to decide. There, there's at least two items in here that he will not budge on. Well, I hope that you, uh, you and Andrew and the powers that be can get things worked out quickly and, and let them get going. One, one thing that I would like to respectfully request in that contract that board members of any kind has absolutely nothing to do with any kind of rain outs. If, that's, if it rains, that's, that's your all's call. I don't have anything to do with it. The mayor, Bruce, nobody has nothing to do with any kind of rain outs. And I'm pretty sure that is in their current contract, the two contracts, uh, previous contracts. And I know it's in this one that field conditions um, rely solely on the department um, to play or not. Once they get started, or like at five, like night games, once our staff leaves, the fields are playable. It's on the league then to determine whether fields are remain playable. Um, I will say though, as far as soccer goes, <coughs> not to sidestep this, but um, Andrew does have another um, contact call t coming up and uh, he's been very instrumental in trying to um, get a soccer league in here. I know that's been one of our goals and it's definitely one of his to, to make it happen. Um, I think we all agree that Soccer will implode and, you know. Um, All right. Do you got any questions on the ball league? We'd be more than happy to answer. Um, any questions? Anything you don't understand? If somebody asks you. We don't have a December meeting with this advisory <clears throat> committee. Um, but if we have an update with the contract, we will send an email out letting you guys know that. But if you respond, please respond individually. Do not respond to all. Um, since you guys are, you're not a governing board, but we take your recommendation before the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So um, it's just easier and cleaner if, if the responses go to one, to one person. I'm, so. just, I'm just afraid with the holidays coming up that even uh, Katie is going to be you know, everybody's, I hate that it's come down to like a, almost a crunch time for whatever reason. Well, and, and it can still get done because they usually don't start signups until January anyway. So our workshop is January 2nd and the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting is on the 7th. So, I mean, it, if if both parties came to an agreement that that we were both comfortable with, we know the board's going to vote. To, to pass it so uh, I mean they're in place right now it's just we got to give a little and they got to give a little when do when do the other leagues start up like Smyrna and they Murphy usually Pro. start do they start before the before Laverne League usually they all start around uh first of April opening days generally first of April but their signups you may catch some signups for a neighboring community at the end of December. Most of them are first or second week in January. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think pushing it back that much right. is going to affect it. Because I was thinking, like, in basketball, 
we got sign ups going on, I guess now I'm getting ready to start. But all our kids are gone. Mm -hmm. They already in Smyrna, they already in Murfreesboro. They've already signed up. And now we starting late, uh, you know. And every time we start late, we missing out on the kids. They going elsewhere. So that that unfortunately, of course, you know, you've been around as long as I have. That is a that is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we collectively, as a group, as a city, we have absolutely zero say about it. Right. Nothing. Uh, and I hate it. Other than the fact that I know that Molly and Kathy and him, if somebody calls up there, they give them the details about sign-ups and stuff. But we just, you know. But but there again, uh, you're right, uh, <coughs> Kevin. We we've lost a lot of kids, and Laverne went through about a three-year, maybe four-year period there to where things were just. You know, people got a bad taste. And most of the time, if kids sign up to play baseball, a lot of them play basketball. And I know back in the day when I was announcing football, I would announce sign-ups over the loudspeakers and things like that. And, and, and it's changed a lot. It really has. Yeah, we and always. Smyrna has added Stewart's Creek, a complex out there for baseball. So. Yeah, that's where my, yeah. Yeah, I mean. You know, and I think. I think people look at it and they're like, well, you're cutting their fields back from eight to four, so then that's cutting into their ability to to make money to, to fund the league and the nonprofit. But realistically, there may be two other eight field complexes in, in the mid state area. Most complexes are four fields and, and they operate fine and generate revenue. Um, there may be one in Crossville, there may be another one going towards Memphis, but most complexes are four fields. Cane Ridge, Cedar Crest, um, Barfield, uh, even the Smyrna complexes are four quad fields. I've been to them all. I know. All right, guys, any more comments, concerns, questions? But it's $8,000. What, like you said, it's minimum of 12 games, but what time frame? Is it like a? No, that was that was their previous contracts. I got you. Their previous contracts was for eight usage of eight fields, and that was for a twelve month period at eight thousand okay. dollars. That's my we, twelve months. The right. contract that we submitted to them previously, that we're working with them, would be four fields at four thousand dollars, and then they are still wanting usage of the front fields, so all eight for tournament dates. So if you drop it to four, would it still be for the twelve months? Yes. yes, that would be for just the back quad. Gotcha. Now, if there was to be a – where we're using the tournaments, all eight fields, there would have to be a fee increase, user fee increase because of product and materials needed. Gotcha. So if we, were get, if we were to go back to eight fields, it would be the usage of eight fields for um, six months, basically, and four fields for six months. So you would have the use to whole park for the first six months of the year, January through June, and then the back four. Because um, our main goal was to get soccer in here. It may never materialize, and then we revisit it, and the four, the, we're not going to let the four fields sit vacant. But somebody's going to use them. Whether we have to revisit this later and open up the four fields back up if soccer falls through. But we're trying to do as much as we can with what we have and the only viable option we have if we're going to pursue soccer is those front four fields at Veterans Park. Your concession's there, your bathroom's there, your light's there, your fence is there, your parking lot is there. It's a no-brainer for eight or ten, ten U under soccer league. Anything else? So our next meeting will be in January the 27th. Uh, so I guess, as the chairman, I will tell you guys, uh, you're stuck with me for another four years, and uh, oh, no. y'all have a big happy Thanksgiving and a, and a big Christmas. I look forward to seeing you at the parade and at the uh, ice rink. I look forward to seeing Mr. Oliver and Mr. Uh, Giles out there 
uh, what do they call it? When, huh? Yeah. Figure eight. You're out there figure doing eight. your figure eights, and when you jump and twist, you tell how much I know about ice skating. <laughs> when you see me but uh, I'll see you, everybody out there. With that, I'll call this meeting adjourned.